Hello, welcome to this, the 19th lecture. Uh, this lecture is going to look at the window head detail. So the previous lecture looked at a window sill. We're going to continue that upwards and look at what happens when we reach the top of the window. So the top of the window differs from the sill in a couple of key ways. It doesn't have the same degree of vulnerability where rainwater penetration is concerned, but it has to accommodate a structural element in the form of a lintel, and that carries the loads from the wall above. This short lecture is going to look at the elements of construction required to create the window head. So this is the detail that we're going to be looking at. It's the corresponding head detail to the detail we looked at for the sill. It's got the same construction and it's taken from the same place. It's from the Scottish accredited details. So like the previous detail, we have two blockwork leaves, both above the window. And because it's a very wide cavity, we have two separate lintels for each. So if we had a much narrower cavity, we might be able to use an alternative, but the width of this cavity means that a separate lintel for each leaf is probably required. And the two circular elements are effectively the reinforcement within the concrete. So we have steel reinforcement within the concrete lintels. The cavity is filled with insulation, as before, tightly fitted between the leaves of masonry. And because there's no cavity, i.e. no space between the blockwork and insulation, we don't actually need anything to deal with fire at this situation. The insulation is probably mineral wool and has a rating which effectively works as a fire stop. So we need to deal with air tightness from the inside to prevent moist air from passing into the wall. So in the face of the wall, that could be a parge coat, so a plaster that fills any of the voids in the masonry surface and seals it. To the soffit, we're using plywood, so we can fix that up to the, to the lintel. It stops any moist air getting through, but it also acts as a barrier, that is a fixing surface for the window frame below. And when we come to fit the window frame, we can screw it down into, or screw it up, into that plywood. Behind the window, there's a compressible sealant, that's usually something like Compraband, which is a, a neoprene tape that expands out and fills gaps. And as with the earlier detail, we need to seal the window against the airtight barrier within the building. So we use an airtight tape. This is a foil tape um, with a high tack that uh, sticks the two things together and prevents any air being lost behind the window. So for the exterior finish of the building, we would apply render or harling or some other decorative finish. And that finish would be continued up into the soffit. At the junction between the wall and the soffit, there's probably going to be some kind of reinforcing bead. And then that would be finished against the window with silicon sealant. Internally, we want to see some kind of plasterboard or dry lining. So again, much like the outside, we would apply that to the wall face and the soffit. And it needs to fix onto something, so we would put some treated softwood timber framing behind that. Um, that would be fixed back into the, the wall, and that would allow a small space for cables and pipes to, to run in. But mostly it's there to allow the plasterboard to be screwed into it. And again, that would be sealed against a window frame with sealant. So that's the initial detail laid over the colour build-up that we've just explored. So it's pretty close. You can see where I've been a little bit cheated a little bit with the, the shapes of things. I'm not going to use PowerPoint to draw a window frame. That would be slightly mad. And we can put that together with the section that we worked out on lecture 18. So we've got the sill detail and the head detail. And together they show an entire window section. So key points to note are that each leaf requires a lintel in order that the loads from the masonry above can be carried to the wall on either side of the window, that external render should be returned into the window to the underside of the lintel, that an air tightness membrane can either be a sheet material, it can be smooth plaster or a cement render applied internally, or indeed it can be an airtight board such as OSB or plywood. Adhesive foil type air seals should be installed to all sides of the window covering the junction between the window frame and the airtight barrier. And sealant is required at all junctions of dissimilar material. 
Okay, thank you very much for listening. And if you've got any questions, please let me know.